I have this beautiful staircase hallway that I have been working on for the past couple months and something that I have wanted to do to it is some board and batten. So that's what we're going to be working on today. I'm going to take you through how I create the board and batten, all of the measurements, uh, how to install, and uh, hopefully we can add a little bit of character to this hallway because it surely needs something to liven it up. So let's get started. So this is the hallway that I want to do the board and batten in. It's very plain Jane, but it's very small as well. What I'm starting off by doing is just measuring the wall. I'm going to treat each wall as its own wall because you know there's door frames and things like that. I got a measurement of 52 inches. Then I'm going into the garage and I'm getting some of my primed MDF. I will link all of the Home Depot links down below so that you can know exactly what I used and what sizes, that sort of thing. And I've cut two pieces. Okay, now because I'm making a ledge, I know that not every board and batten will have such a wide ledge like I'm doing. Some just have like a very little. I want to have a wide ledge so that I can actually like lean pictures up on it, maybe put like wallet and keys on it, that sort of thing. Because I'm doing that, I'm going to glue and nail these together. So I'm just taking some carpenter's glue and I'm putting just like a very small amount on. I don't want it like oozing out, you know? but I definitely want enough that it's going to be sticky. Now that that's on there, I'm gonna flip this down. I'm gonna push the two together, and then I'm going to just stick a nice nail in there. Okay, so there's my ledge. It's gonna go on. Now we can go put this up. Attaching board and batten to a wall is actually quite simple, but whenever you're doing it, make sure you're using a level. Uh, you could use a brad nailer. If you don't have a brad nailer, you could use construction adhesive. You could use both. Uh, you could um, just use a nail and a hammer. There are many ways to do this. You don't need a brad nailer like I have, but it does make it easier if you have one. And they're quite simple to use, so I would highly suggest if you like to DIY to try one out. The next step here is to figure out our bottom pieces. So here's the wall. We've already gone ahead and attached the top piece. So I've added that in. The next step, you really wanna put baseboard on. If you already have baseboard like me, you don't need to worry about that. So I've just put in some baseboard to show you guys that. But make sure if you have no baseboard, you put baseboard because it really helps to complete the look. Now here's where you wanna figure out what look you're going for. How many spaces do you want in the bottom? Do you want to have a, a, you know, a few spaces, keep it kind of wide? Do you wanna have a ton of spaces? So like six spaces. Just figure that out in your head. Figure out what you want, and then we'll figure out the exact spacing afterwards. I really liked the way it looked wide. I have small walls, so I decided to go with three spaces. The next thing you're gonna wanna know is do you want end pieces? I have trim going around my doorways, so I didn't feel the need to put these pieces, so I'm just gonna ignore that for the sake of my tutorial. But if you wanted those there, remember that that's going to have to go into your math equation. Okay, so remember that measurement 52 inches, that's how wide our wall is. Then we decided on three sections, so that's gonna be two boards. The boards are one and a half inches wide. There's two of them, so we're obviously gonna multiply that. We're gonna have three inches, and then we're going to minus that from our total wall space. This is going to help us get the correct spacing so that we don't have to think about it later. Okay, so 49 inches, we have three spaces. So it's very simple. We're just gonna divide 49, divide it by three, we get 16.3. So each little spacing is going to be 16.3 inches. And that's how we know where to put our little pieces of board. If it seems hard or like a hard math equation, I promise you it's not. And as soon as you're doing it, you're just gonna be like, yep, makes sense. So here I am just measuring how long I want our boards to be. And then again, I'm going into the garage, taking our one and a half inch primed MDF, 
cutting that up and then I can just put it in place. So you're going to want to use a level when you put this on. Trust me, have a level with you the entire time you're doing this. And then I'm just using my Milwaukee Brad nailer and I'm just nailing everything into place. This was the fastest part of it all and it, this is where I really got to enjoy it because I got to see it come together. Um, so I worked on, like I said, each part of the wall separately. It was just easier that way. And um, I posted on Instagram this clip of me talking to Girly and that I just accidentally caught on camera. And you guys asked me to leave it in and I don't know why because it's very cringy to watch back, but enjoy. Okay, let's get back to work. I don't know if I loved that I put this ledge here. I kind of wish I didn't because I kind of wanted to put a mirror that sort of overlaps the board and batten, but I'm gonna deal with that at a later date. Um, the board and batten that I put on the stairs, I didn't do a ledge because this hallway is so tiny. <laughs> I just didn't wanna take up any extra space. Okay, a quick lesson on caulking. Caulking. <laughs> Uh, we're going to be using some DAP. This is going to fill in all of these cracks. It's going to fill in our nail holes, things like that. So I just have some DAP here. This one is good for paint projects, so you can actually paint this. I have one of these in my caulking gun already, but when you first buy it, it comes with a sealed tip. So what you're going to do is you're going to take like a knife, an X-Acto knife, kitchen knife, whatever you have, and you want to cut the tip off. You don't want to cut it straight off. You want to cut it on an angle. So let me, let me try to get a little close up of this. See how I've cut that on an angle? That's going to make it apply a lot easier into your little crevice. This is the gun that you're going to put your tube of caulk in. So you're going to start off by sitting in, inside. If your caulking gun has this pushed forward, so let's say it looks like that. All you do is press this little lever right here at the back, press that, pull it out. You might have to twist it depending on how old your caulking gun is. And then you're just going to start going like this. If it's a new one, you should pro probably only have to do that a couple times. But mine has, is a little bit old, so uh, I had to do it a little bit more. When you press this, caulking is going to come out the end of your gun. Okay, it's going to keep coming out. It's not going to know when to stop unless you press this little trigger right here. You just press that and then the, it, it will stop coming out. So if you're going along and you stop, make sure that you press this or else this is still going to be squeezing stuff out. You're going to get it everywhere. You don't want that to happen. So how I'm going to do this. I'm going to make sure the flat side of this angle is facing down towards the crack. So you see how we have this crack in here? That's how we're going to fill it. If you don't put enough in, you can always do like another layer. You want to keep a damp rag with you in your ha other hand at all times. Um, you can also, as gross as it sounds, lick your finger. Uh, but if you're not into licking your finger, uh, you can just use like a damp cloth. So I'm just getting my finger wet and then I'm going to take it and I'm just going to press the caulk in. Anything left on your finger, just go ahead and wipe it on your cloth. For your nail holes, you're just gonna put a little dab on it. Same thing, wipe it away with a wet finger and you're done. later everything is now dry um, I've just put some tape down to help because I'm going to be painting this a semi gloss so it's a different finish than the wall so it's just gonna help me keep everything nice and neat we are using Benjamin Moore paint for my trim this is the paint that's in my entire house we're using the color Oxford white and we're using a semi gloss finish
Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground Okay, so here is what the board and batten looks like all finished. There's gonna be a separate video on me decorating the space just because this was more of like a teaching video and I wanted to keep it heavily on that. So over here we have two sides that have uh, a large ledge that will allow me to put little plants on them, uh, large picture frames to lean up against them, mirrors, that kind of thing. So we have one there. Then we also have a secondary one over on this side. This one I decided to put hooks under so I can hang dog leashes, purses, things of that nature. Then if you go back to the stairwell, this one does not have a ledge. Um, I didn't want to take up any more space so I just kept this one simple, no ledge. It definitely doesn't need one, um, doesn't need anything protruding. Then over here, as you come in, we have another ledge, um, just thinking for Michael's keys and his wallet when he comes in. I was actually debating going up the stairwell with the board and batten, which I think would look nice, but I am worried because I, I, I did say like, I don't want to clutter up too much because we did a big statement piece on the stairs. I didn't want to take away from that. So I think I might do some sort of gallery wall up there, which will be in another video, of course, but, yeah, so thinking we're gonna hang a mirror up above this. I just really feel as though this gives a little bit more character to otherwise a boring, very small hallway. Of course, you can always paint your board and batten a different color than your wall, or you could paint just above the board and batten, right up here, a different color, and keep this white. I'm gonna keep it white because I want this space to be nice and bright, but I just love it. I think it really matches in with the stairwell. Stay tuned for another video of me decorating this space, but uh, until then, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.